Okay, one more piece using this uh, white colored pencil type of lighting technique. And again, like my previous card, um, on a pre-folded piece of dark blue cardstock. I was just thinking maybe I should do it on this side because this side, um, that pre-fold kind of is raised right here. So um, if I try to stamp, you know, across that, I might get this big gap in between there. So let's go with the... Uh, inside portion of this. Now this is a 5 by 7, so we're talking about a 10 by 7 inch uh, card here. Uh, you can do it on, you know, this on a smaller card. Just do a, you know, a smaller version of it if you're following along. Okay, now, oops, I was, it occurred to me that um, what I want to do for this piece is extend the um, Seaside Cove small across that whole span. Okay, so the only thing I don't want are these rocks right here, okay? Because that will, that kind of closes off one side of the design itself. All right, so we'll take those off of there like so. Let's see. <laughs> I need to make sure that I have the right side. Okay, I'm going to put um, a bit of a kind of a shoreline on this. So I'm stamping it uh, about an inch from the bottom. You can go an inch and a half, two inches, whatever you want. There's, this one's going to be pretty um, sparse in terms of the number of images used. But I want it just very sparse and tranquil and whatnot. All right, so you can see that's where that ended right there. Hmm, I might have to go, let's see, I might have to go three times here. I wasn't expecting that. And I'm just eyeballing it, okay? I'm not going to uh, spend a lot of time with my positioning. By the time I add um, the lighting to this piece. I might blend in a little bit of black ink too. Um, I don't know, it's just not really that big of a deal, all right, to get everything so precisely lined up. That's, that I designed these stamps that way to take, you know, a lot of the, uh, uh, the tedium, um, which I don't consider the fun part of stamping out of it. Okay, now let's see, that ends right there. I inked up to about right here, okay, I need to kind of eyeball it like so, and I'll go like this. Now, my, like I said, my horizon lines aren't going to match up perfectly. If I do, it's going to be luck. I just want it, you know, I don't want it a quarter inch off or something like that, but if it's, you know, eighth of an inch off or something like that, no big deal. See, right there, you know, close enough, right? And we have this area right here. So let's finish that off with another portion of this. Um, let's go for like an interior portion right here. You know, as opposed to these rocks right here. Because I did get some of the rocks right there, so uh, already. I don't know, I, I could go for more of those rocks right there. And I already inked it up. Okay, so let's go for here, okay, now, let's see if I can get this. <laughs> My tack and feel is kind of all gummed up, so it's not completely transparent, but, you know, yeah, close enough. Okay, so see what I mean right there? I overlapped a little bit too much, so it's a lot darker. But again, it's not going to matter. I'll show you why. So, if you're at, ever at a point in your compositional kind of arrangement of your pieces, don't panic, okay? These are designed a certain way to, I don't know, it's really to take out that tedium, like I said, out of the, uh, out of the process. Um, you know, we don't have to consider, you know, a lot of different things that we're doing, which doesn't mean that you're not, you know, reasonably careful in terms of your placement and stuff. You know, you don't want these things, like I said, a half inch, you know, apart from each other, skewed or kind of going down in an angle. But even if you did, 
you know, there's certain things like what I'm doing right here. See, I'm going in here, and I'm going to add a stronger horizon line, you know, across this, okay? Now, I'm not going to add in so much that I'm just obliterating everything, okay? Here's just a paper towel and some more of that pigment ink that I used. Uh, you, you can use, this could be a dye-based ink, too, you know. You could have stamped things out with a dye-based ink. Um, this is a dark blue cardstock, so I happen to think that the pigment ink stands out a little bit better because it's a thick ink. Um, so it can get into the, you know, the grooves of this paper, the texture of the paper, a little bit easier. Okay, see what I did right here? See that horizon going like that? And we'll do the same thing over here, so it's going to go across that you know, that transitional area where there's two um, stamp designs, stamp impressions, I should say, um, joined together. All right, so go like this. Now, see, I'm a little bit off over here, so I'm going to just, you know, create that uh, extra space with this piece of paper right here. So in other words, it's really down here if I masked it off completely, but... I missed it a little bit, so I'm just coming up here, and I'm just creating a higher horizon line, okay, where it didn't match up. One was a little bit higher than the other, again, so. And this is what I'd be doing. It's not just for this technique. You can do this with, uh, you know, like I said, yeah, it could be mats, uh, you know, cardstock, glossy cardstock, white paper, or whatever. Maybe instead of using black, you'd be using blue or something like that if it's, you know, high noon or something like that, or whatever time of day, sunset, you'd be blending in maybe oranges, reds, pinks, whatever, you know, whatever colors, twilight, could be whatever twilight colors are, greens, etc. All right, so see that right there, my, my horizon, okay. One thing I didn't mention, of course, we're working with the front and back of the card. I like doing that on these pre-folded cards or I don't know. It, it, it kind of makes for it, it makes for a splash. So I'm going to kind of uh, design my composition with only this portion in mind. Okay, so it has to read as that. But then you open it up, and you know it'll have kind of a secondary kind of a compositional theme to it. You know, because you know it can help but have a little bit of, you know of a different spirit when you open it up. You know because it's an equal amount of area you know, um, in the space. Okay, so adding some additional tone down like this. Just kind of creating a little separation between the, the waves and the sand down here, okay? I'm gonna go in between some of these waves as well. We'll enhance a lot of the uh, lighting though with the use of some colored pencils. I should use a black colored pencil, black and white colored pencil, you know. But this is covering a lot of space right here, you know, just because it's wide. Okay, and I'm going to come up in the sky and do something similar up here, okay. The, kind of the look of this piece right here, it has the feel of like working with charcoal or something like that. Especially on this uh, paper with a lot of tooth to it. Tooth is texture. I mean, it certainly, that's what it looks like to me. Um, this, uh, this media and surface combination. Okay, so we have this. Everything's kind of, you know, coming together. See right down here? That's reasonably <laughs> emerged. Uh, let me bring in a little bit more over here. Let's merge it a little bit more. That's one thing about working on this dark paper, too. It's, you know, you have things that don't match up super well if it's between the black and the blue. It doesn't show up as much, so. Again, it's, you know another reason to not kind of sweat the small things in stamping and in life in general. 
Okay, so there we have it. Okay, what are we at? We're at the 10 minute mark. That's not too bad as far as uh, scene goes. All right, now I have these um, rocks down here. Let's put some shoreline rocks down here. Just a tiny rock stamp. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna, I'm kind of using um, secondary impressions in here to get lighter impressions. So what you do is you, when you're fully inked, right, it's going to give you the strongest impressions. So you put the strongest impressions, the darkest ones, in the dark areas. And then with each impression that you give, it's getting drier and thus lighter on there. And that's when you put the lighter impressions in the light areas. Does that make sense? I mean, it's certainly an easy technique like that. See that right there? So you're utilizing kind of the ghosting technique, you know, stamping, stamp, stamping, for your lighting within here. So you have darker rocks over here, lighter rocks in the light. All right. Hmm. I am thinking about that uh, black colored pencil. I wonder if I have one. I'm sure I have one somewhere. It's probably one that was... Um, little stubby again. I would imagine black and white's probably you know, a couple of the more popular colors in a set. Okay, this is the tiny rock small, just to get a little bit of extra texture in here. Okay. All right, so we have that established. We're going to do most of our stamping right now because when I start utilizing um, other types of media on here, especially if it's something like wax from a colored pencil. You can't really apply ink over the top of it, very cleanly at least, okay? So you got to get the impressions down, especially if you're working with dye-based inks. The pigment inks maybe will stamp over it a little bit more, but um, for the most part you kind of want to get most of your impressions done at this point in time, with this technique at least. Okay, look at that right there. Actually, I had a little bit of a seam right there that wasn't, you know, looking terribly good, so I just stamped my figure over that instead of being over here, you stamp in front of that kind of weak spot in the background. But I'm still looking for I mean, I usually look for this anyways, or try to achieve it in my pieces. I, I, I like real tranquil, calm pieces, usually. Not, I've, not everyone. Sometimes I want something a little bit more dramatic, but... Um, in light of the weather events, this period of time, I think something nice and calm for everyone to look at. All right, this is the uh, winter brush. This thing is not a winter scene that I'm necessarily doing here, but um, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you know types of foreground imagery in here. It's like coastal, you know, grass or something like that. Weeds, coastal weeds, pickle weed or something maybe. Or this just could be a very large lake. You can put trees on the other side of this, and it becomes you know a lake as opposed to like this large kind of expanse, you know, of a huge lake, you know, one of the Great Lakes or something like that. Um, you can even put palm trees in there and it becomes tropical. So, you know, it's whatever you want to do. You can customize, right? Okay. Now, I think I want to do um, some sort of moon around here. I was thinking about doing this graphic statement and stamping the word moon up here, and then coloring in one of these O's right here, and then making that the moon. But since I'm doing a two-page spread, maybe I'll do it um, twice. I'll do something like that. So um, I'll have like a regular moon over here, and then maybe the word moon on the other side, kind of reiterating the theme. Moon. I can put it right in the middle. Or I can 
So I, I'm not sure. Let me figure that out um, in a bit here. Okay, so I think I want to put um, some sort of moon image up here. Let me go and figure out what um, stamp I want to use for that. And uh, we'll continue. All right, we have our moon here. And let's get this one added in. This one's a glowing orb. <laughs> For, I don't know, I was running out of uh, things to call. I have so many different moons um, in the line. Let's see, where do, where do I want to go with this one? Do I want to go higher, lower? Maybe kind of lower on the horizon. I don't know, let's do that as a little change of pace. I don't know if that's really a change of pace. I have it coming up from the horizon sometimes. Not this particular moon, but just, I'm just talking about any moon in general. Okay, so we have that right there. Kind of creates a little bit of a dynamic, having it a little bit um, kind of in an angle like that. Um, slightly off center. Um, all right, now let's go with, let's let that set up a little bit. And while that's setting up, in other words, drying, I'll stamp this word stamp over here, just moon. Kind of deciding it. Do I want to go with the moonlight or just moon? Yeah, let's go with the moon. In the spirit of the movie called Moon, which I'm guessing no one, none of you have seen. <laughs> I did. I don't even know if I heard of it. It's not like on streaming video. Kind of an interesting one though. Good sci-fi. Um, okay, just getting an even application of this. I'm going to go kind of upper left-hand corner here. All right, I always like those kind of graphic looking pieces. It would have been kind of interesting down here on the horizon too, wouldn't it? Hmm. All right. Now, we have this moon right here, and the thing that I've been kind of experimenting around with, I, I think it looks, I could just uh, fill that in with um, colored pencil, white colored pencil. As I say it, I'm thinking, should I do that? Maybe I should, you know, but I think I'm just going to go with um, the white paint pen. I, I don't know, it just, it comes out as a stronger focal point. Point. Okay, it's just, you know, using the acrylic pen. All right, so filling in. It, it really stands out, though, because it is so light. Even that impression of the blue, uh, white over here, over blue, it comes out a little more translucent. But this is, you know, without question, kind of a, the focal point of the piece. because it's so light, like so. All right, we'll go with that right there. Now we're going to have to mute that a little, little bit, um, but we'll just go with that uh, for right now. Okay. All right, now do I want to go a little bit more mixed media here? Or... I'm, I'm tempted to bring in this brilliant sink in here, but from a textural standpoint, it might be better if I just go with, you know, some of my pencil. Um, okay, maybe for this one, I'll just go. I'll just go with the pencil um, right now. <laughs> yeah, these videos, uh, you know, I apologize. They're not. I should do some actual instructional videos exposed, you know, I'm always doing these kind of uh, experimental ones, which I hope, and you know, are, you know, somewhat instructional if you can follow them. The quick, you know, the quick scenes there, you know, the, you know, the, you know, kind of the, uh, what do I call those ones? Um, This, it kind of the step-by-step -step ones are more kind of uh, instructional. But, okay, 
So we're looking at this. And where is the, the, the moonlight going to be? Okay, now I, I brought in a lot of this tone right here, and maybe I should have went only to right here because it stands to reason that this moonlight would be, you know, kind of right over here. I don't know, maybe this is a shoreline that kind of wraps around this way, though, too. You know, we can do that. Actually, that might be a good idea. Hmm. Uh, I, I haven't put down too much of my um, media so far but i just thought this is going to look really good here with some additional forms i can't really i don't think i could stamp it over that uh, um, wax that's been laid down there maybe maybe so i'm not sure but let's put some aisles out there okay okay so i have my island set right here all right i'm just going to use some of the smaller ones in this piece I think, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. I just got done kind of saying, yeah, these are much more kind of experimental pieces than instructions. It's because I'm coming up with stuff on the fly. Oops! I stamped that one too high. I don't know. I'll build it up. <laughs> this is what you do when you do this. Okay, so I'm going to come down here lower. I'm looking at the end of this block, and I put that stamp up much higher. See, if I'm looking over like this, I'm right kind of in my way. Okay, so I'm putting this down like this. I should put it lower on the block. Anyways, there, there you have it, okay? This actually here. Let me put it down here so I could see it better. This is a beveled kind of block on the top, you know. So this is actually the part that you put it on. It has my tack and peel, which the tack and peel can go on the uh, you know the other side as well. But okay, let's see. Let's get some other other forms in here. Now I'm putting this one over here. I don't think it'll be too much of a um, a distraction in terms of being the same thing, because I built it up three times there. And then, you know, we'll just take, where is it? Yeah, here's my little cotton ball again. And you just blend those in like that, right? Oh, the aisles are solid, so. I've made them so you can, you can put them in front of one another, because we, we never want to stamp um, one object out. And for it to look so similar, to another impression of it or of itself, okay? So stacking them like this certainly eradicates that kind of uh, you know, visual notion. Okay, so blending in like that, right? So we have a little bit of it. That, I don't know, that, this just looks better to me anyways. Okay, so let's go with two of those or two areas of that uh, aisle. Let's go with this little dinky one right here. Kind of has that Baja Peninsula type of uh, look to it. I'll go a little bit lower with this one. Come up over here. I'm kind of just kind of building a little bit of a hill over here. I mean, you can add more of these. I think I think that looks good though, just as is, like that, like so. And it gives a little bit more of a kind of a containment on the composition, maybe too. All right. That is that. I don't even remember where I was. Oh, I'm on my pencil work here. All right, so, uh, like I said, it stands to reason that this lighting would be kind of underneath my um, moon on the water's surface, okay? But also, on the stamp itself, it's a little bit harder to see. Now, if you're familiar with this stamp, uh, the Seaside Cove, there's this um, kind of what they call spin drift. It's that kind of uh, top of the wave, you know, that's kind of breaking 
and that top of the crest right there is often catching a little bit more light. So what I've done on the, uh, the stamp is I've created that, but I've created a shadow under the crest of the wave. Uh, let's see. Oh, when I started the here, let me adjust my exposure. All right, a little bit lighter. Sorry about that. But it is fairly subtle anyways. So, um, I've left some of this wave portion lighter, okay? And it's lighter just because it's defined by the shadow underneath it. So I'm just going in very lightly, though. See, I'm not making it too light right now. I'm just kind of filling it in with a kind of a lighter touch on this. I don't, I'm not utilizing so much pressure, okay? So you can kind of bring out your figure in here a little bit more as well by putting some... Don't fill in this whole area here, though. Kind of have it a little bit streaky, okay? So you're oscillating some of the light and dark in here. Okay, see that kind of coming around? Look at that lighting on there. And then we'll carry that over here as well. See in these lighter areas? You're definitely down here. And this way. You don't have to equal, you know, do it equally, though. In fact, I think it looks better if you have it a little bit irregular. Okay? So that's not a harder process. It might be thinking kind of a little bit more ahead of it, you know, things than totality, but in application it's a it's a much easier technique than filling in the whole thing because you're just doing less you know you just don't do as much okay now see in here you can kind of get a really you know with your pencil you can go for a really light kind of um, application a very thin application of this now the softer your pencil is kind of the lighter touch you want to do i have a i'm often working on the side of my pencil more than the tip when you work on the side like this, see this, as opposed to going kind of more, you know, vertical, closer to vertical, you can get a much um, wider and softer application of whatever you're doing. That goes for any type of uh, media, you know, practically. All right, so see that? Your little figure is starting to stand out a little bit more because you've made the area behind them lighter. Okay, so I want some of this down here on this dirt or sand, you know, so maybe some of the sand is reflecting some of that moonlight, but maybe, you know, the water might be a little bit more reflective, so maybe you use less of this one. So like this. Maybe the horse is casting shadow down here, too. You know, a little bit of a shadow down here. So, yeah, through the legs, there's no shadow here, but the shadow is kind of more back here. All right, so that is, you know, it's looking fairly interesting at this point in time right there. And again, this is what it looks like, you know, without, you know, the back side of the uh, card. And you open it up for the full page spread. Okay, now here's what you do on the moon. Um, let's zoom in here. And do you see these areas? On this one, maybe it's a little bit less uh, visible, but I can see it right here. But I have these little thin kind of areas of the cloud that are lighter. So I'm going in there, and I'm just reiterating it a little bit more. Now watch this. See, as I come out here, I'm using less pressure so that it transitions from whiter to darker over here because I just have less white. But you want a little bit of it, maybe. Over here, it's a little bit closer to my light, okay? And then, as I move out here, you just use less. So less pressure kind of out in this area. Now watch right here, right next to my moon. See that? I'll just kind of add a few things. Let's see, I didn't do it in one sweep. I'm just doing it in, I don't know, that was like 20 sweeps or something like that. So you just kind of build it up until you get you know, the, uh, the value that you want, you know, and the more you build up, the lighter the value. All right, so underneath the moon here on this cloud, and then transition it, go a little bit lighter, closer to the moon, 
more strokes. You don't even have to press harder. And then you just kind of, coming down here, you just kind of blend it in like this. Okay, you don't need Gamasol. Hey, I love that stuff, but uh, the look of it. I haven't used it before, but you can blend out, but you can also just do your blending by inherently having it blend in, you know, as opposed to blending it, applying and then removing or spreading it around. Just don't have it down there just to begin with. And then you can have the benefit of the texture of your medium, okay? Texture with colored pencils, that's one of the big things that's good about colored pencils. So you don't necessarily want to just get rid of it. Texture's a significant um, kind of part of the visual language of art, okay? Especially when it comes to paper. You want the characteristic of the paper to be part of the kind of the visual language of the piece. It's very integral in terms of the uh, kind of making your artistic statement. You're enhancing kind of everything's better attributes as opposed to just trying to cover it up or something like that, okay? Now, if there's some sort of weakness to some, you know, you know, uh, area or surface that you're working on that's just, you know what I mean, that you don't like, then certainly, you know, try to, you know, uh, minimize that. But when it turns to most papers, I think that, you know, this it looks good to have that in there. Okay, so you can see here are kind of the textures of the, the pencil and whatnot, especially when you look up close like that, right? See that how it's not super smooth? Yeah, there we go. But, see that right there? That lighting. But then when you look at it at arm's distance, this is a viewing distance right there, so it's like you get the benefit of kind of smoother, you know, an overall look at arm's distance. But then you have the kind of the, uh, the looser kind of, you know, more textured feel of the surface and surface and media combination. Okay, now, now that we have this, now let's try to enhance some of this a little bit more by making some of the areas a little bit lighter. So some of the areas like this around my moon, you know, you can just go in and make it a little bit lighter. Like so, okay. Areas that are kind of facing the moon, but you see that little, you know, little variation? Look at that lighting in there. Doesn't that look uh, a little bit more kind of realistic, you know, in terms of a uh, light strength when you have that lighting around the object and then maybe down here underneath the moon you know directly underneath it where you get you know kind of the most reflective type of um, kind of reflected light or I don't know yeah it's like a, a visual dialogue lighting dialogue or whatever And this down here, it makes a stronger case for you know that being your light source like that. So see this kind of pattern like that. It's kind of I don't know. I call it visual dialogue between our light source and the reflected light down here. There's other things I can do in here. I'm looking at this place and, it, you know, this location. I'm thinking, you know, we can bring in some additional shadows around here or something like that. And that might be interesting. Maybe a little bit of texture up here with some. I haven't used it for a while, but, uh, you know, the Dr. Martin's bleed proof wipe in here might be kind of interesting. All right. I'm trying to keep this minimal so it's a little bit... Um, I don't know, it would certainly definitely fall in line with the, uh, the quick scene um, theme of this. But let's try it. Uh, I don't know, I've added a few things on this. I don't know if we're still at half an hour, but um, let's, since I've already used this paint in here, let's go in and add a few little sparkly bits, okay? Ooh, that really stands out. <laughs> I thought that was reasonably white, but when you put that 
very sharp, uh, get a little white dot in here. You know, from this pen, it really, that is very white like that, so um, it just comes to show you how, you know, kind of dull um, white that uh, colored pencil gave me. I'm not using a really good colored pencil. Um, I need to find mine. I have a bunch of them somewhere. But this one's kind of a real hard one, but um, if I had a softer one, I can get that. But here's this little sparkly, kind of shimmering lights like that. They all stand out a little bit too much. I'm able to kind of mute a couple like this. And I'll kind of just blend them in like so. But, I don't know, I think they look okay. Little glistening type of things in there. I think I need to uh, bring these ones a little bit closer. I need to taper these ones off a little bit more. Okay. All right, so we'll do that. And, okay, this is what I wanted to do too on here. Um, sometimes I think that moon can be a little bit too sharp I don't know, I think it looks okay, but let's, I think this will look even better. You take some, some white pigment ink, and you really blot it off, okay? Naturally, if you're using a very wet pad, you might have to, you know, blot it off 20 times more than I just, okay, that's, these are used right here. They were really crusty hard. I need a soft one. You need a soft one like that. Okay, let me try this one right here. Yeah, this one's better. Okay, so you really blot it off, and then what we're going to do is we're going to very lightly dab around that moon right like that. And do it in repetition. Do it where the, you know, the process takes, I don't know, 30 taps. 30 taps takes, I don't know, like 15 seconds or something like that. So it's not like you have to be patient. You just have to be, you know, 30 second patient, you know, or something like that. See that kind of glowing light like that? <laughs> I should use a brand new one of these. This is giving me a little bit of a clunkier application. Here we go. It needs a little bit more. After all, this stamp is called Glowing Orb. Now it's really glowing like that, doesn't it? Isn't it? Let's put a little bit of down here. <clears throat> Let's put some of this uh, little bit <clears throat> on some of these lighter. Ooh, that's a little bit too much. <clears throat> kind of these lighter areas of the, uh, the waves or the ripples. I think if I put this moon and I make that one of those O's, that kind of glowing type of thing. I think that would be too distracting. So let's just go like that. All right. <clears throat> now let's see. I'll tell you what. It's moon, but let's put in a few little extra stars over here. I'm going to do these ones really small. But, um... constellation that is. Make it look a little bit larger. And I'll put a couple of little stars out this way too. Kind of from a textural standpoint. Pretty good. I don't know if we'd see so many stars out there um, on a full moon night like that, but hey, who cares? I think if I, I'm really tempted to put some little kind of sparkly little splashes over here, but I think it would distract from this, you know, this piece like that. So, anyways, here's your um, card. Okay, and I need to adjust my exposure. Okay, look at that. Isn't that? I mean, that is some really fun lighting um, for me. 
I guess it's, I don't know, maybe having a really hard pencil is good. This is a Faber-Castell Coal, Coal Erase. I don't even know if they make these anymore. This came out of my supplies from 20 years ago. But having that real dull kind of, you know, lighting in there, coupled with the brighter light, I don't know, that's pretty effective. But here's the card again, you know, it's like this. You know, you read it like this. Cards, you know, that are kind of front and back, I, I believe they're read like this. And then like this. You can see that you get that Orion in there, constellation. And then they're read like this. I see it as not as one piece. Well, it is, but I see it as really like three pieces. So you want to kind of make them read, you know, accordingly. It has to be reasonably interesting. Now, I don't want this one. The backside is usually not going to be as interesting with, you know, with a significant focal point as your main piece like that. But then look how they read together like that. And then, you know, your card, you know, right in there as usual. Something like that. But, um... yeah, oh, here, let's do something like this. Let's add a little bit more interest, okay, to this back one. But let's keep it very subtle, okay? Which one of these was I working with? Okay, so let's go on some of these kind of larger stars. I don't know if it's that side that I was working with. Okay, so what I've done is I've just given a little bit more of a glow Look at, look at how subtle that little glow is. It's like a nothing thing, but doesn't that change kind of the look up there in a way? You know, having that like that? I don't know, I think it does. And plus two, what we've done on this piece right here, we've really extended the, um, the visual um, texture of the piece by having something kind of soft like that, you know, within this space. I don't know, the water down there is kind of soft looking, but not as soft as that uh, little texture up there. But anyway, you know, these are fun types of little exercises, and uh, I, don't, I should do them more. I haven't really done a whole lot of that in the past, but I don't know. They're pretty simplistic, and I think make a pretty full kind of, a, I don't know, a visual, emotional statement like that. I think that looks really quite tranquil. And maybe partial, uh, a, a part of that kind of emotional kind of tone of this is just simply through the, uh, the simplicity and, um, I don't know, kind of relative, uh, you know, usage of uh, kind of a minimal palette. Okay, so we had, you know, the black and white inks right here. Uh, we have the paint pen, and then, you know, this. So what is it? It's like three white and one black. And, of course, we're starting with the, you know, a neutral ground of, uh, you know, the blue down there. So we're getting variations of blue through the use of, you know, uh, a varied application of the three different whites. Like, the, this is very opaque. This is, yeah, these two right here are pretty, you know, they're pretty translucent, okay. They're, I don't know, a little bit more opaque, you know, depending on how much, you know, you apply of it. But, you know, they're, they're C3 media, so, you know, everything looks a little bit different. And, you know, this one is, you know, with the stars. You know, the light sources right here are the more opaque ones, the whiter it is, right? Okay. All right, so anyways, hope you enjoyed this piece. I... Certainly had fun doing it. Uh, learned a few more things in here, and that's always a fun thing. And it's always fun seeing new types of uh, things kind of develop right before our eyes. A big part of fun of being a paper crafter, right? All right. So, anyways, until the next video. If you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks as always for watching.